What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. What? The Ham Radio Crash Course is talking about CB radios? Well, I'm not. I'm going to be a participant, but I've got the man who's going to lead us through it. I've got Sideboom. And with Sideboom on our side, we're going to unravel what the world of competitive Citizens Band Radio is all about. I'm super excited. I hope you are, too. Enjoy the memes as we kick things off. Feels like I was uh, live streaming only a couple hours ago. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Appreciate you coming by the Ham Radio Crash Course, taking the time out of your busy week and holiday season. Who, buddy? We already have 186 people watching. I think CB Radio is going to stick around, guys. I think it's a big thing. You heard it from me first. <laughs> uh, so one of the reasons we're doing this, by the way, this is something that, that Sideboom and I has been, have been talking about doing for a very long time. I did not find Ham Radio via CB, as many people did, particularly in the 90s. I was always a shortwave listener. So... For me, I understand all the words. Like, they all make sense. I get it. But, like, it's all new. I'm like a a child being shown this for the first time. I'm super excited, and I can't wait to talk to Mr. Boom about it. But first, I want to say, go check out hamtactical.com. Where's that at? There's that beautiful website. Thank you, Leia, for running that for us. The merch store for the Ham Radio Crash Course. Get all your holiday paraphernalias. Obviously, we're we're pretty close to uh, Christmas next week, basically. So can't comment that your shipments all make it, but uh, there's a lot of cool stuff like that FT8 neoprene bag. Throw your antenna and your bits and bops and everything else in there. You could probably put a radio in there. I'll have to get one and test that. I probably should have done that first. Uh, also, I want to give a reminder to next weekend. It's it's the weekend. We're going to be live streaming the Christmas light antenna. I have a new design. I'm going to start working on it tomorrow. I have to assemble a vertical thing uh, to make it all go down smoothly. So I hope uh, I hope you check us out next week as well. And uh, also, big, big, awesome, uh, big, awesome thank yous to Steve, K5ATA, the ARRL, and everybody who um, who works on the QST magazine. They did a two-page article on on me and the uh, Ham Radio Crash Course, and I'm, I'm just so humbled by it. And uh, thank you so much, uh, everybody, particularly Steve. You, you did a fantastic job in the write-up. There's Steve right there in the picture. You see that? Good job in the picture, Steve. Absolutely love it. All right, <clears throat> so... What else we got? Last thing, and it's really to introduce Mr. Sideboom. Uh, Sideboom's got a YouTube channel if you wanted to go check him out. It, it It's going to have more stuff in the future because he's working on some pretty cool uh, builds for that truck that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. But without further ado, let's let's bring the man right on to the Hammer Radio Crash Course. Mr. Boom, how are you? What do you, do you prefer, what do you prefer to call yourself? Uh, what do you want to call you? You can call me Side Boom, Ryan. Or, right on, right on. Pretty much anything except late for supper, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, cheers to that. And cheers to Bill Redman. Holy smokes. Thank you for that super chat. That's huge. Josh, thank you. You inspired me into the hobby. Your fresh approach. Uh, where is it? Sorry, I lost it for a second. It jumped up. And great content on live streams and video has kept me going. I passed my basic with honors last Tuesday. Thank you, Bill VA3WBR. Well, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. And I'm glad you joined us on, on the air. Now, Sideboom yeah. is, you're not just a cb or You're also an amateur radio operator. Do you, do you want to give your call sign or, or what do you want to do? Yeah, I'm, I've got it in the slideshow as well. Oh, okay, but, okay. Uh, I, I am KI5FWJ um, out here in southwest Louisiana. Uh, right on. Usually where I'm going to be now. So right on. Um, so help me out now because I understand the world of ham radio contesting, right? We're trying to make as many contacts as we can in a, you know, some amount of time. Huge rigs, you know, many, many thousands and thousands of dollars on these like super stations, right? C B contesting though. It goes by different names, right? You were telling me about it beforehand. What's the deal with it? What do they call it? What's the point? So generally known as a key down competition or just a key down, mm-hmm. um, it, it's basically uh, just like, a, like listen to the, the channel six out there. It's who can over talk the other person. 
and it's a shootout. It's, it's just it's like in, a drag race. It's intentional, like QRM. <laughs> Yeah, basically. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. It's uh, as I would feel that it would be the way as it is over in uh, in Italy. You know, it's just two guys who can talk over the next one with the uh, you know QRP. And, and so you help me vi- get a visual picture in my head. What do these these events look like? What what is the actual? What do they do with these things? So generally, you'll see them set up in a large parking lot or a large field. Um, just as if a a drag uh, drag race would be, because as you'll see in some of these pictures that I brought, uh, they get kind of eccentric, uh, (laughs) with how these rigs are made. Like, uh, uh, if you could just imagine a multi element beam for air, you know, 160 on the top of a truck, (laughs) it's, it gets pretty large, pretty quick. And, uh, they'll set up side by side. Um, as you would in the typical like, drag like race, like butt and... to butt or side to no, side, side, there. side by side. Okay. So, oh, like a drag race. Okay. Yeah. You just said like that. a drag okay. race. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Basically, what you're doing, uh, if you want to figure this in the easy solution, this is just an RF drag race. So an RF drag race. Okay. Well said. Well, okay. The, the easiest way to the, the kind of throw it out there for everybody to, to kind of picture, uh, mm-hmm. and that's all they do. The you get two rigs. Uh, most of the times they have a red light, green light sitting out in front of the truck, so that the guys on the the microphones will will know when to go and when to stop. <clears throat> and when when you say go, we're literally talking about cramming as much power as they can into that microphone. And what do they do they yell out a number, their name? Yeah, or usually, what are they doing? Usually they have their their number, you know. So uh you know if they're Mr. Four Six Six, they're just gonna yell in the mic, you know, four six six, four six six, four six six. And then at a given location away is a guy with a radio uh, receiving this audio and whoever's stomping over the next is the winner. But ah. big drama has happened in the past where uh, two guys will go to line up uh-huh. and they're not actually recording the video on the back end that shows the audio. And then that, that race becomes null and void because there's no physical proof of who, uh, who won the actual shootout. Okay. So now this is, this is already starting to blow my mind, but before I ask this question, <laughs> Christiana, thank you for the super chat. Christiana says breaker, breaker 19. Good buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, I got a couple of ham radio questions that are in the chat. Like what is a good radio to work? The ISS really not the topic of today's video, but <laughs> I encourage you to join us over on the discord. The link is in the description because when we end here, we're going to hop over to the discord for an after chat. I'll still be live but we're going to take questions for ham radio and and for sideboom if he's available to hang out with us so you guys can ask questions you'd be around for that do you have time yeah I'll okay be around. Cool. so uh if you want to ask questions for sideboom live right now that's fine just type them into the chat say at ham radio crash course wait towards the end of the show or join us on the after chat usually goes for a couple hours and we should be good okay so so is there a ranking list somewhere is there like a scoreboard uh a lot of the inner groups will carry who's on top from uh from competition to competition um uh, i know the guys over here on the east coast they are big uh, uh-huh. you go to the carolinas and you're gonna find a lot of guys in the competitions uh but as far as who holds them and who you know distributes them i don't know because i've really been out of that lifestyle for right I, I think the last comp that I went to or the, the last break, as they call them now, was probably eight or nine years ago. And is it like a bracketed competition? Like they, they go, they have heats and then the winners advance so, kind of thing? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, uh-huh. And then they also have uh, it breaks down in uh, amplifier setup. So okay. you'll have like uh, and like I different know, classes, I've, like a race car. <laughs> Yeah, and I've okay. already been seeing it pop up in the chat. So a lot of the CBRs will consider uh, your final, your transistor as a pill. A pill. Because yeah, the Toshiba 2879 term. looks uh-huh. like a big old aspirin. Right. So that's why a lot of people are, are in the CB world will call them pills. Uh, so you have your two pill shootout, your four pill, your six, your eight. Uh, and then you have just depends on how many people are going to show up or what's what's popular in the year prior so if like if there was only two pill four pill eight pill that were popular they'll kind of drop some of those other amplifier classifications Uh, off the list unless they got a lot of people saying hey we've got bring back guys we want to we want to bring with six pill rigs then they'll bring that back so Um, it's whatever the hot meta is for the time yeah i mean it's it's the same thing in the drag racing world like yeah uh, of course when i was when i was big in the imports 
uh, they had multiple different all motor four cylinder classes. Right. And naturally aspirated and, versus forced induction, gas, well, no gas. They still have that, but it's uh, like I used to run uh, all motor street. So motor it street. was a street car. Right. It was all motor uh, versus no all tubbed out. Yeah. yeah. So now they just dump it all like it's all all motor pro. So it's no matter what, if you have a gutted street car or mm-hmm. a full blown track car, as long as it's, a, it's all motor car, you're now lumped in with the guys that run the street. So, and you said the bracket breakdown is kind of like how many pills of so power output does antennas yeah, play into this at all? No, the antenna is what class you, is just uh, power, power base. Boom, boom. That's it's it. power base. So okay. if you have, uh, it's not like, a an eight transistor guy is going to go run into the two transistor class because you're just way overpowered. And it's just, it'd be like cheating if you will. Got but it. If, so there, there's a question, and, and I'm curious about this myself. With this move to FM or the acceptance of FM into the CB service, uh, do, you, do you think that that's going to play anything into this, uh, into breaks? Will FM matter, or is I everybody mean, always AM? Is it always AM? From what I've been seeing, because I'm still in a lot of groups with a lot of people, and mm-hmm. there's not a lot of talk of switching over to FM for the breaks, and I, I believe it's mainly um, based on radios that are popular, which will kind of get into yeah. the slideshow. Uh, Thank you, Shannon. But I mean, there isn't, like a lot of guys are starting to run some Striker SR 655 and 955s. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Jenkins says, side boom with the super chat. Thank you very much for the super chat. So then that's a that's another good question. Obviously, people are like, well, okay, sure. They get together. They're blasting out as much power as they can. They're yelling their number. So whichever number you're hearing, right? Okay, so then somebody asked in the chat, well, then how far away are the receivers for this contest? Like, how, how does that all work? That's usually determined by your coordinators okay. uh, that run the brakes. And I don't know if there's... I've never seen that side of the setups. It's usually you're over there where the action is, but they have one person that's uh, predetermined to be uh, what they call water gates. And that's the guy who's running the video on the back end to see who the winner is. And by uh, back end, you mean the receiving radio. You're right. Okay. The, and that's, that's the guy that's the most important other than the competition, the the two that are in competition is the guy running the videos uh, to, to determine it. But I've never, been on that side of the field never looked into it that much but i know that most of these guys that set these up have uh point a and point b on all these locations that they do key downs at Mm -hmm. uh what does what does it mean to get down side boom so so a lot of how does one get uh, down it's it's basically it's it's how many bushels you're putting into your amplifier you know (laughs) Uh, or coming out of your amplifier uh (laughs) which bushel is just uh is that 100 1, watts? 000. Oh, 1,000. Yeah, what? every thousand they, they call it a bushel. How, okay, I, I mean, I gotta ask the I gotta ask the follow up question to this. <laughs> These contests, like, what are the top end? Uh, uh, how many bushels are they throwing down the uh, throwing into the air there? The big boys won't ever let you know what they're running. So, I mean, we could be anywhere between ten and thirty plus thousand watts out of a truck. Yes. And how much power is that generally? I could do. I guess we could do the math. But um, what's I mean, the like so, if you looked it's, at one of the classes, the categories, what's what's one so of the categories like? That would be like an unlimited class. That you sure? Be, yeah. That would be your, you know, your top fuel funny car. Right. No Nitro methane. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah strapping yeah. a jet engine on the back. <laughs> so are we are we talking like what kind of power though? Like to generate that kind of output. Well, uh, that's another fun topic I was going to bring up here. Um, mm-hmm. So. You have yeah. You got slides, so I don't want to. If I'm cutting into the slides, cut me off, and we can start talking about that. Well, whatever you prefer. We, we'll look. At, we we can look because I got I got the I got the power systems in the slides. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we take a look? So, Sideboom did something pretty cool here. He put some pictures together, which I think is awesome. See if you can share. You should be able to. Or I'll I'll swing it over to you. But I found it fascinating. We were talking beforehand, uh, and he was telling me that it's actually really difficult to find a lot of these pictures. And and why is that, Sideboom? Because if you're not there and you're not in the little inner circles of these guys, you you generally don't get them. Right. Uh, the other part is some of these guys are secretive. <clears throat> sure, you that's know? like the secret secret sauce. It's a secret weapon, it's, right? Yeah, go ask McDonald's uh, what's in their you know thousand. I mean, uh, their their secret sauce. Their burger the spread, Big Mac. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see here. Where yep. is that? Uh, lower part of the zoom. 
bottom. So it'll say screen share. Oh, I guess I need a. Oh, it might help if I full screen it. Yeah. So yeah, I, we were going to ask talk about this at the end, but yeah, we'll we'll get into more detail. But yeah, generally this is illegal, obviously, because this is power well beyond um, what is expected. Um, <laughs> what the service allows uh steven steagle i talked to florida from texas last night on channel 23 and he says 73 well that's awesome and of course he's talking about cb radio all right so what drop the mall so that's another thing you're gonna have to explain to people what that means is that a hearse by the way yes it is a custom dually hearse uh that has a uh crank up roan tower uh physically attached to the the, the structure of the vehicle that's fantastic. And, uh, that guy actually is uh, in uh, Don's neck of the woods. He's up in uh, the Dallas area. Is he really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that I've followed that guy for many a moon until he just kind of stopped posting new updates on the on the vehicle, which was about 2015, I think, was the last new pictures I've seen of it. But. Uh, that guy has done some really amazing things with that as far as uh, shootouts and chasing skip. Uh, see if you can push. Are you pushing the slides right now? Is it not coming I up? I saw it. Well, it's it's kind of... Uh, change the slide really fast. See if this fixes it. Can you change the slide? Yep. Oh, uh, maybe. That's weird. Okay, hold on. Um, Do it Did again. Break it? No, you didn't break it. It's It's on my end. That's weird. Okay. Um, Let me see here. No, you're good. You're good. We'll just do it this way. It, this is fine. This is fine. No, you're good. Go back. Go back and do it. You're good. Let's see. It's not on your end. It's me. Uh, let's see. Catching up on the super chats from Evan. Thank you, Evan. Side boob getting down on HRCC. That's right. Uh, Jason Jenkins. Tell us about the Prime Minister CB, please. Who Prime Minister Sir Mix a lot? Is that right? Yes, that is true. That's so, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Uh, it only took me 34 years of my life to realize that his song buttermilk biscuits, like the first 16 bars of it was him talking about CB radio. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So we're looking at the, the hearse. You kind of explained that a little bit, but yeah, let's, let's go through it. Feel free to go, go ahead. So I just kind of threw in, you know, who I am a little yeah. bit for the people that don't know me from uh, the HRCC. Um, I am an Elmer, so I, I do try to help out, uh, the people who have questions, whether it be about ham radio or CBs or anything in between, if I have some knowledge base on it. Um, I used to be a huge CB uh, radio enthusiast mm -hmm. uh, from way back. It was kind of a generational thing. You know, my grandparents were CB radio guys and truckers. So that's kind of what I was uh, brought into as a young and uh, I am a discord roller collector. So <laughs> if, if <laughs> that's you on the right, that's snag, you on the right. Yes, right? that is me. That right. is That is everything I can. Uh, I'm also uh, a part of Ham Radio Adventures. Um, I, I love doing potas when I have the time. Uh, right. Used to be more, but uh, hopefully next year we'll kick back off and do some pretty big stuff. And uh, I, I am trying to keep my website up. So if anybody wants to, you know, check in on what I'm doing, uh, I have Kerchunk.me. You, you can find me there. Yeah, and I'm dropping the link to your uh, your YouTube there, Sue, too. So keep it going. Yeah. Good stuff. Yes, Don, I do. I do enjoy me a good tough book. Oh, yes. That's that's another huge point. We got to <laughs> make sure everybody knows about that. Uh, you are the the tough book whisperer for, for the Ham Radio Crash Course. So if you have tough book questions. I, uh, I try to be. Uh, you're definitely I've, the man I've, on the HRCC for that. You help me out. You help Don. You help lots of people out. I, I've turned many a screws in those machines. So, yeah. Uh, I, I am throwing a disclaimer out. The only thing that I do want to point out to people here is that... Um, if you decide to go down this route in your life, uh, do it at your own risk. Everything here is for demonstration purposes. I I don't want anybody that may be recognized from some of these photos to be you know harassed or unless you have serious questions for them and, and try to want to get into the that lifestyle. Uh, this is all just for fun. Uh, it was a good part of my life and I enjoyed it for a while. I just figured I'd share it with everybody else. Oh yeah, so. this in no way is us uh, throwing any kind of shade yeah. at this activity at all. I think this is I think this is fun. I think this is cool. So all, all the ham radio operators in the chat, I'm, we're doing more of this for just getting the information out there because I, I think it is kind of fun. Uh, we'll we'll get to the legality point at the end here, but I'll let you I'll let you keep going. <laughs> I, I just figured I I figured I'd throw that in first. Just so yeah, we all know. of course. So let's talk about some power. 
They, you know, let, let's the, look at that. Of questions. <laughs> so this is uh, from the nineties on up. This is what you would see in a typical uh, key down rig, uh, multiple alternators, custom brackets to hold all these alternators in. Uh, if you, ever get into looking and finding pictures from key down comp uh rigs you will find most of them are suburbans or a classic chevy or ford van something with a bigger v8 into it and this is why uh if you've ever loaded down uh you know multiple alternators at once you better have something big under the the the, the power you know as a power plant to actually drive all those because uh you key all that up and you can actually kill the motor if you're not turning enough rpm it'll just it'll <laughs> so they are they're just stamping on the throttle then gun and uh, so, running the engine at, at some constant rpm to, to keep the power so there's a couple of different ways to to get your your rpm at a steady rate uh mm -hmm. some of the old school vehicles that i've laid eyes on personally will have like uh and some heavy diesel machinery like water pumps and stuff like that they have a throttle adjustment so that mm -hmm. you can pull a knob and turn it to fine tune where you exactly want your that that cable that's actually going to be hooked into your uh carburetor and for instance on this vehicle to hold it at that steady rpm so they don't have to sit there and try to right. oscillate their foot on a gas pedal and go up or down you can set it at 3500 and lock it in and there you go you're you're ready to start keying down on your box Mm -hmm. so that looks like so, a, a chevy is that like a chevy small block yeah that's a that's a, a typical uh 350 motor a 350 yeah that's what i thought it i'm not gonna say but, for sure but if i had to assume this is probably gonna be in a suburban <laughs> yeah so i i can see an msd ignition box on the left i'm seeing braided lines so they're also doing some some pretty decent work on the engine too it's probably got to be pretty There's... rock solid right there's some guys that'll run a fully built like a 383 stroker motor inside of their key down rig and all it normally does is drive on a trailer and back off and then oh key down God. it's a it's a it's a cb <laughs> radio trailer queen is what you're telling me well same thing as like uh in in the audio world car audio the oh of right those guys yeah will drive it to and from or you know like the big the the over the top builds that it's no longer drivable right they'll they'll do it because i mean because it weighs uh, twenty thousand pounds if i had a guess this guy's probably only getting like three to five uh mpgs on this old motor because even with the alternators not being um uh, cranked on real hard that's a lot of torque that your motor has to put out just to keep it idling it, you know when you start adding on to a system that's more strain on the motor, even for driving around. So, so hey, could you imagine throwing a belt on this thing going on? Oh my way? God. <laughs> or the custom belt that you got to make for this yeah. to, to, to have it ready to go. So you said suburban, why is the suburban kind of the platform du jour? It's room. I oh, mean, just the space to put junk besides into? Besides like a 12 passenger van, you don't really have much more room to play with in a Suburban. Is, is it not because it's just a metal shell, it's all ground plane? Or is there, well, is, does that play any factor? It can, but you know, when you're running, I mean, that guy, I can see uh, that first uh, tube there with the green and the yellow on it. That's uh, three big chunks of uh, looks to be four or odd gauge wire coming on just that <laughs> one alternator. So right. you multiply that up and you start throwing it down. You know, you've got to have room to run all these cables. And then, like I told you earlier, some of these guys will run like two inch uh, heliacs to their antenna on just from a box to a roof. So like less than three foot section of two inch heliacs to, to their driver, to their antenna. So, yeah, just to, to reiterate what you just said. <laughs> they're going two inch heliacs from the output of the radio or the output of the amp into right. the antenna that they're yeah. running on. The so roof. it'll just be a couple of foot section from, from the box to the top of the truck to drive this whole system. That's amazing. That's crazy. So it, it's, it's always, it, it's a whole nother realm. Like these guys, I have mad respect for them and what oh, they yeah. do because they're knowledgeable. And some of us think that this is over the top, but, I mean, so was funny cars. I mean, everything's <laughs> over the top at the highest levels of any hobby. Everything right. is over the top, right? And and these are all, I mean, look at these rigs that they're setting up too, the engineering that has to go into these. I'm seeing a lot of like welded frames for these alternators to go on. It's got to be robust enough that it doesn't just, you know, collapse under its own weight. Plus you got all those, those pulleys, those got to be squared up and taut and everything. There's a lot that goes into this. Oh yeah. <laughs> if, if, just one alternator is just a hair off. It'll throw the belt. Oh, yeah. Uh, just like in your vehicle, if, if you don't put 
in some vehicle applications, if you don't, if you put aftermarket parts on and it's just, you know, a millimeter out of alignment, it'll keep throwing the belt. Same thing with this. You know, if you're not, everything's not truly square, it's, it's done. So here's another example. I mean, how many, we, this is a, a, a camera, right? Somebody's camera phone look, looks like yeah. it. How many alternators are we talking? Cause I see five, but I think there's probably more there. Is there more? I've seen personally up to 10 in a vehicle oh, just squeezed into the, to the engine bay. And it, <clears throat> like I was saying earlier, it depends because there's two types of guys in this world. There are the key down guys that'll run AC and then the key down guys that'll run DC. So, so that was, that was blowing my mind a little bit before the show. <laughs> We're thinking DC, it's all DC, DC cars, you know, everything runs on DC. Explain the AC. Why AC? Why do they step up to AC? Uh, They'll run a full size amplifier. Like now, they're not going to put a Henry 2K floor module into the back of their truck, but something very similar in size and power. Mm -hmm. So they'll have 230 plus volts being alternated by the truck itself. So the radio, everything else runs off of a 12 volt system. Right. And then they'll have alternators that'll crank up uh, 230 volts of power and run a normal size or a normal style amplifier like you would put into your house got it. in the back of these trucks so this is uh this is very much like my argument for getting a 12 volt laptop you're just <laughs> unifying the charging solution right <laughs> yeah basically you know, i, I hate it. to carry around a 240 volt laptop <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so and that's just and that's part of the solution now with today's technology things have changed uh i have seen a lot of the guys uh, that still run the 12 or 16 volt area of key downs are starting to switch over to a company called Mechman alternators. Uh, they've been in the sound world for quite some time. Mm -hmm. They make a very small unit that can do, I want to say it's like 350 amps per alternator. So if you look at these, I, I, I wish I had a picture of the alternator itself that they run but these are not small boys these are big chunky units right and if these are if some ac the... delco brand alternators that they're throwing <laughs> yeah. under the hood versus that these audio alternators are smaller with roughly the same output right. so you can cram more under the hood so if you look at the picture that i'm showing right now in the bottom right hand corner you'll see the factory alternator how small it is compared to the the chunker so if I oh i see guess, it yeah yeah if I had to put guess to this, this is probably an AC truck because ah. you're not really seeing the big chunks of four gauge running everywhere. Yes, he's got some electrical tubing running right. in the back and and that sort of thing. But unlike the previous picture, you don't see the big chunks of four gauge go into the alternators like you did. So, you know, it, it's 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 a different type of atmosphere and i've never wanted to play with that i really don't like messing with anything over 48 volts personally so i this would be out of my realm mm -hmm. <laughs> so i uh, <clears throat> as far as these trucks go i know how they work i know how they operate them but the a to b steps that they do are, are just a little bit different to my full knowledge <clears throat> So we got, it sounds like we got a couple of th enthusiasts in the chat. So James is saying Mechman is going to lithium batteries and super caps, major amps. Yes. And the super caps are kind of crazy, uh, even in the car audio world. Yeah. Cause uh, they're on, can, they've been doing that for capacitors on, on car audio setups for a while, right? For the competition yes, and, guys. And now the, the technology just keeps improving, which keeps making everything more viable. I mean, when you watch the, the newer technology and you pull, let's say 250 amps on a battery, mm -hmm. you, you kind of wear it out real quick. When you throw a super cap in line uh, between your battery and what's t pulling the amperage, you now have something. If you watch the way it, it, it if you voltage clamp it or amp clamp it and, vo and watch the voltage of it, it'll drop down mm -hmm. and for a split second and it'll pick back up and hold that original. Let's say, just say you're at 14, eight volts. It'll dip down to like 14 and then come right back up and hold that 14, eight until that battery starts getting weak. Mm -hmm. So the advances of like how long you can drive on this stuff is, is advancing as well. I like the, uh, the deep uh, reference there from Norman. We're going to need an elephant to figure out if AC or DC is better. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shout out to uh, Thomas Edison. <laughs> that's awesome so uh the other thing that's real big in these trucks that you'll see is a lot of guys will put their heart and soul soul into consoles yeah 
Um, each one is different in each truck. Some are a full custom blown and uh, install like this. And some guys are more minimalistic where they'll just kind of drill holes into the dash and throw their uh, bird watt meter. Right. So they can watch your, your another forward and the reflected power. And that's all they care about. A couple yep. of little uh, battery gauges to watch their voltage and they're, uh, the, you know, they're home free and that's how they are. But then you get somebody like this and, they build something so custom and so unique to, that fits the personality of their truck. So they can probably be watching, you know, um, <clears throat> if I had a guess, he might be setting this up to watch uh, the voltage going from a smaller amplifier that drives the bigger amplifier. And you'll see a lot of that. And so in these bigger, uh, these bigger uh, amplifier trucks, uh, they'll start off with their radio mm -hmm. that'll go to, let's just say a four pill amplifier okay. and that four pill amplifier will drive like a 32 or a 64 pill that to, to, it's, you know, stepping up to get that high, uh, wattage on the backside. That's, it's just amazing. So Don asks, at what point does the antenna melt? And so oddly enough, that was my introduction to all of this was a YouTube video where, we watch the like plasma ride up the verticals and is that common does that happen often like you uh, can literally see like lightning riding up the the verticals well i've i've heard stories i've never seen it in person i wish i could there's actually a video uh i think it was in florida on a uh kind of a muggy and foggy night and the guy was out there key in his rig and you could see the static electricity kind of follow up the antenna right uh but there's I a mean, there's a YouTube video of that from yeah. I I've seen it. It was you, you, really really old YouTube video, but yeah, you can tell the good the good old videos because every time they start keying up, the the tape cuts out. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> the yeah. eight millimeter goes down. Oh, man, that is <laughs> that is insane. All so, right, yeah. Let's see. Uh, but as far as the antenna melting, I mean, most of this stuff is is built off of you know aluminum construct or you know stainless steel. So. Uh, it's it's melting point is whatever it is in Fahrenheit and you know we we key we key up a radio and talk on it and we're just creating heat right right so that's probably the same the same thing as how many watts would it take to heat up stainless steel and that's probably where the the answer is gonna lie mm -hmm. I've never seen it like I've seen plenty of people burn out connectors and insulators for the stuff but you know that's all Delrin it it has its own threshold of what it can take right. That is a cool so console, see. though. And then, like I was saying, something that's something that's more, uh, more simpler. Uh, this guy's running the SR nine five five, a couple of watt uh, gauges, something to watch his volts, and he'll probably uh, the box at the bottom is what you uh, what you use for variable uh, <clears throat> alternators like the MacMans. You can get one that you can actually uh, dial the wattage. You can drive oh. around all day and run your fourteen volts, and then if you feel a little froggy and want to you know, jump down on your rig, you can turn it up to 16, 18 volts, depending on what you order and how the, uh, how the setup is. Right. So, so then help me out. Cause obviously the thumbnail for this video is, is a, is a striker radio. And you, I yes. think you mentioned the model number. What is it and why, why is it, is it the common radio that people use? Uh, not there. It's, it's coming, it's becoming more popular. There is a specific, uh, uh, radio modifier out there that is doing some crazy good stuff with the the striker as far as uh pure audio and the ability to uh, have full adjustment so when are uh, as us and and ham radio when you key up your radio there is no voltage or no watts that go out mm -hmm. there is nothing that comes out until we send a cw signal or talk with our voice to modulate sure well as a cb most cbs when you key the mic it's all automatically putting wattage out or what we consider or what they call dead key wattage okay. so whenever you hit that mic it's dead keying a certain amount of wattage so with the radios like uh the sr955 and uh in it's surprising to see that it's all pretty much Cobra 29 guys. Okay. There is uh, some variant of the year, the make, the, the the plant that it was made, 
Cobra 29 in most of these rigs. Uh, you'll see some guys running like 148 GTLs, but they're kind of fair and few. And then a lot more guys are starting to dial into these SR955s, and that's <clears throat> the amount of pure audio, pure modulation that you can pump for or over modulation that you can push to these radios and then having a variable dead key. Okay. Because you don't want to like ham radio, you know, we can key up and have our amplifier sitting there and you can dead key all day long and you're really not going to hurt anything as long as your SWR is fine. Right. Uh, Where, yes. Yes. That's what 1500 Watts is your max. Uh, right. Well, well yes. When, when, well, when you're driving a radio that's driving a box that creates 2000 watts that pushes something that maybe 20,000 watts, <clears throat> having too much dead key wattage is going to kill your box because inside of these amplifiers are uh, keying circuits or switches. Uh, uh-huh. The so, relays? Yeah, the relays. So, you know, if you try to key with too many watts, it's just going to hard arc. Every time you click it, it's just going to be like hitting a hammer onto the side of your radio. There's only so many of those it'll take before it's just done, right? Mm-hmm. Or as I've seen in some cases, it'll just lock open. So, you know, you'll hit right. it and it'll be driving it too hard and it'll just lock it open. Right. So, uh, Christiana asked about the FM thing. We talked about it a little beforehand, but, you know, hypothetically <clears throat> in the future, people could be going to FM, but there's nobody really doing that yet, right? That you've seen anyway? Not that I've seen. I mean, most of the guys that are running FM are the guys that are just out there talking skip. Um, sure. Whether it be like the 28 or 38 or channel 28, channel 38 uh, or 17 upper or lower sideband guys. Mm-hmm. There's They're some... kind of the ones getting the best use, best bang for the bunk out of uh, being able to run FM. Okay. There's some good chit chat going on talking about the differences between AM and single sideband and in CBs, and it sounds like AM is still kind of the king, right, out there? For the most part, yeah. yeah. Everybody hasn't switched over to FM, but like I said, no you still versus got a lot single sideband. I mean, oh yeah, it's pretty much all AM uh, when it comes to these the key down comps and to like the guys on channel six because that's just what they've set all their gear up for. Um, I mean, could you imagine building a amplifier specific for just running on 27.025 AM and then having to redesign your box just to go to FM? The, a lot of these guys aren't going to waste their time to do it. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, and like I said, and I don't know why this turned out looking like a potato. Uh, <laughs> most of these guys are going to run some variant of a Cobra 29. Okay. Uh, it's the modability it's the radio most used uh there's a lot of techs that know them they're simple they're not over complicated uh the mod list is a mile long for these guys uh, uh besides sure. doing yeah. noise toys and stuff like that you know so it's a tried and true for most of the uh the key down comp rigs you'll see them in a, every rig i believe uh, unless the guys that are swap swapping over to the to the striker, so uh, I that's the radio I have. I also have a Bearcat, I think. Oh my yeah. goodness! Look at this! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the copper mine, or the ninety? No, this I believe this is a ninety nine percent copper build. If you want to know more about it, I'm pretty sure a, a search on Google will pull up the video on this. Uh, this is the starting of the the pill life um so if i'm not mistaken this is a 32 pill that he had built <laughs> uh, this is one beautiful piece of machinery uh, and i think anybody ham or cb can appreciate the amount of work that is went into uh throwing an amplifier like this together so it's very impressive that's just a an absolute a uh, massive amount of copper too yeah uh, I mean, I think the only things that aren't copper are like your screws and some of the terminals, everything else that he had, he could put make copper, even the lid to this amplifier is copper. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, here's another 32 pill. With some pretty uh, big caps. Is, yeah. Uh, with, uh, and, and this guy here, uh, I know him on a personal level, uh, each amplifier builder is going to do something completely different than the other one with the same values in 
making an amplifier. So, you know, he's using the capacitors to try to help, uh, try to help push this along to, uh, to be able to stay keyed down longer, which is the right. basic theory of having those capacitors linked together to the board. Uh, but this one as well, another 32 pill, uh, there's your key and circuit way in the background and the fuzz. Yep. That big, um, that big black the, box with the vertical metal pieces the, on top. The the little guy over there. That little guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's two bow things wide. Uh, I've measured it, you know? Uh, yep. 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 <laughs> Standard unit of so, measurement. So we, uh, uh, you'll see a lot of these. This is kind of the, one of the easier amplifiers to get into uh, for key down competitions. Uh, is your basic pill amplifier. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this was one of his last Toshiba builds. And the reason that a lot more people are, they want the Toshiba, but you can't get them. They're, they're now unobtaining them. Uh, everybody bought them up. Toshiba stopped making them, but pound for pound, they last the longest. If you take care of them and they make some of the best wattage that you'll see uh, in the linear amplifiers nowadays for when they're when they're, purpose built. when they're doing the key down competition, how long are they generally keying down for? Uh, you'll see them go up to a minute. Like a minute. If wow. the guy on the other top, if the if the guy on the other end's having a little bit more difficult time, you know, if they're both being real strong, he'll tell them to keep it going until, you know, he determines the winner on the backside. Wow. Uh, but most of the times you'll see 30 minutes or 30 minutes, Jesus me. Uh 30 <laughs> seconds, 45 okay. seconds, a minute, you know. Yeah. It, it's it's just like being at the drag strip. It's get done, get down, and get out of town. Right. So are they? Uh, are, obviously, this is the competition rigs. But like, if people are just tooling around, are they able to sustain discussions on these things, or do they roll them yeah. back a little bit to keep talking? So, or what do they do? Just like on on amateur radio, there's the guys that'll go and they'll run their amplifier full blast twenty four seven. And as long as they have uh, the cooling, as long as it stays cool, they'll they'll sit there and you know squish on it all day. The smarter ones that <clears throat> if they're at just if they're at home and they're just talking, you know, to the local guys or talking skip, they'll dial them back. Right. Uh, like here at the house, uh, I have a Polymer 300A, which is kind of an older tube amplifier, and when I'd run that, uh, I would pump like five watts into it and you know get just a little over a hundred out <laughs> so it didn't take much to do you know to do work uh and, and i never wanted to drive it unless i was out there on right uh 28 or 38 lower sideband kyle millen thank you for the super chat appreciate that very much all right okay cool what's uh, what's what's next <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> what am i looking at here <laughs> Well, remember when I talked about AC rigs? Here's your AC rig. Oh my so, gosh! <laughs> so, uh, this is a a very typical kind of your your outlaw style, if that's the way you want to uh, consider these. This is your top class. Uh, in the the far left hand side, the little box you see probably that's going to be a, uh, a four, six, or eight pill that's driving into one of the boxes or both of the boxes, one's driving the other. So uh, the two big boxes are going to be your AC amplifiers, uh, most likely with a tube inside of it, just like what we run in ham radio, but maybe with a couple of more than what we would run. <laughs> uh, indeed. <laughs> so just a it, touch. It, it gets a little eccentric. And uh, as you can tell that he's not running the big Heliax, but if you look at the top of the picture, uh, they run solid, solid Heliax up from the, from the amp up to the, yeah. uh, the puck, uh, the breed love style puck on the roof to mount their antennas to. What is so, a, what is a breed love style puck? What does that mean? Is that a breed uh, love is the manufacturer. Okay. Yeah. Breed loves the manufacturer. And then the puck is just a mounting puck. Uh, so you, uh, if you're wanting them out, like let's just say on your truck, you want to put a, a bigger tar hill, you know, there's not really too many good mounting options in the ham world other than like, oh, you just make something that bolts up to your receiver hitch or something. Well, the puck is, you know, probably three to four inches around. Uh, you s drill out the center hole 
uh, where the one connect uh, one connector conductor goes for your antenna. Uh, and then it has four smaller holes that you drill through, and it sandwiches the antenna, uh, uh, the puck style antenna mount to the roof of your truck. Got it. So it's more stable, and you know you don't have to worry about running your power out. It's it's a pretty sizable chunk. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna get to antennas. Don't worry, everybody. And all the hams in the room, I think you're gonna be <laughs> a, a little surprised what you're about to see. Let's just put it that way. So this is is this like a tube amp? Because this is a tune and load dial, or what do they got yep. going on there? Okay. This is, and if you look underneath, that's his AC uh, power. It's it, oh my more goodness. or less a power conditioner, right? But there's his uh, his. Uh, that's power amazing. that runs it and it's sitting on top and as you can tell the same thing on the left hand side he's got some sort of variant of uh transistor uh dc transistor box that's driving the little the, the little box next to it is driving the littler box on the right hand side and then if you can tell I, I love this this is my favorite part about these trucks He's got an AC a duct ran to the rear AC of his truck that's ducking straight into the box that is his, his big box. Is that and what that dryer exhaust flex hose yes. is? Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. That's his AC. He's like his air raw conditioner. AC from the, yeah, raw yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, air conditioner from the back of his truck into the amp to keep it cool. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But my favorite thing about this picture is I've seen this truck a few times. The the like turkey baster temperature gauge that he looks back to see if it's in the red. Oh yeah. I could see that <laughs> on top of the duct. Yeah. That's so awesome. he knows, he knows that, you know, the AC is working and that, you know, the, the, the hot air, you know, hot air rises. Right. So if it's getting too hot, it's probably not going to be in a certain spot and he'll know to shut it down and save his, uh, his uh, transistors back there. So Night Cry D. Paul says, "Is this the? Is this one of the guys running ten alternators?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Don't, he might be. He might be pulling a generator on with him. I don't know. You know. Wait, we're pulling a generator like a they they run generators too, just for extra no, power. No, no. I was like, is that even legal? Because you could do that. You know, that would work. Yeah, I just you know go bring you a thirty kW cat cat generator on that's your trailer it. hitch and just you know run that. I, yeah, it rolls no, with the it rolls with the vehicle, right? Is most of the times you, you you'll see these guys run what's under their hood because it's one solid unit they're not right. trying to do no parlor trick or you know that may not be a generator behind it that may be like an old am broadcast station mm -hmm. you know turned into a generator i like it man. so i love that so, just getting it done like this is all home built stuff obviously right because you're not there's no yeah. store you go to be like i'm just gonna buy this thing right like there's no there's no cb store like this kind of stuff no, not anymore. If no. they were, they'd they'd probably get themselves into an FCC scandal. Exactly, exactly. Because again, this is we're looking at stuff that is very not FCC compliant. <laughs> but if Let's you think it about way. it, though, Josh, mm. if these guys I'm thinking about play it, it, if they would play on our frequencies, they would be right in line with the amateur radio operator. This is all homebrew stuff. It's true. It's true. And uh, I, I would argue that a lot of this is more – black magic's the wrong word, but it's all very much like hush-hush word-of-mouth stuff, right? Because you can't just go down and buy the ARRL handbook equivalent of a CV <laughs> hand – you know what I mean? Like you can't just go buy this information. you got to know a guy that knows a guy, read a lot on the internet. Like A, a lot of work goes into so... this. This is no joke. I'm going to throw his name out there. I, I don't want to name too many people, but there's a guy out there on YouTube called Mud Duck Sharky. Uh, he's yeah. kind of the, the newer LD Moss CB King. And that's, he was doing, uh, at first he was just blowing up stuff because he didn't know what he was doing, but kept, kept on it. And the dude is very knowledgeable now in LD Mosses. Um, he's kind of one of the top dogs in the, uh, in the realm for LD Moss stuff. So, and I mean, I, I guarantee a lot of these guys were trial by error or oh, sure. they had someone that just handed down the information. Now there are forms that sure still exist that share a lot of great information, but you can, you can basically think about it like this. You could take that AWRL book about amplifiers and how they work and how tuning circuits inside of them work and just expand off of that. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say a little bit, but that would be a little far fetched. You'd have to go a lot of bit to get into these realms. So it's a lot of testing of knowing what wire, you know, what boards. But as far as getting parts, like you can buy cabinets all day long. You right. can buy uh, 
eight, 16 and 32 pill pre-made heat sinks ready to rock and roll. You just got to throw your guts into it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a very niche market and, and niche bit of information. I, uh, yeah. And I, I, I guess that's also an interesting point. You know, I'm always a big advocate of like, blow stuff up, like, try obviously don't get yourself don't hurt yourself don't hurt anybody um but like there's a certain level of knowledge you you get when you actually kind of break something and then you got to fix it you got to figure out what you did wrong and how to how to do better the next time so this is this is all this is unless again unless you got a guy that or a you know a person that teaches you about this stuff hey man i got a guy you know i got a guy <laughs> so here, here we, we go. go. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So, so this is this looks impressive to me. What is this? This looks like a dipole of some kind. It is, uh, as I would call it, a loaded dipole. Because <laughs> there's no other way to really right. to call it because they're running part of a coil style antenna, which you'll see uh on like a lot of your 18 wheelers and stuff, like your donkey made or uh monkey made style antennas or you know. Uh, XYZ branded coils, and then he's put a uh, a dipole on top. Uh, when I seen this picture, I had to snag it because it's pretty cool, and I kind of want to know how it works. But yeah, it's kind of wild. Know. I wonder what's um, up with that. But yeah, I, I know a guy uh, that that's know a down guy. here. <laughs> he's down here in my neck of the woods uh, that basically built a uh, a dipole, or excuse me, not a dipole, a um, a six element uh yagi and he has it so it folds over on the roof of his truck and folds in and then he'll go out to a parking lot kind of like we will for poda and go push it up and build it and sit there on channel six and talk you know on the super bowl for a few hours and put it back down and go back home so if you can think it and it works that's what they go with <clears throat> that's pretty impressive but nowhere near what you're going to be showing next <laughs> <laughs> all right so now we're getting into yaggy land this is this is getting okay all right so i i, I can't for say that this guy is a key down competition guy but i thought this was pretty funny in my uh yeah in my in my library of pictures i had this guy so uh you know uh, a lot of things are kind of like us, you know, you got to make your own conditions and find your own noise floor. So this guy just threw his, uh, his Yagi on a trailer and hooked up in a parking lot of looks like some Mexican restaurant or something. Yeah. So. Cause it looks like the Yagi is actually on the trailer in this case. So the yes. the other ones you're going to show us are our vehicle. The, the other ones are on the truck, but like yeah. I said, there's, it's there's funny. some wild stuff that you'll yeah. find out there. Indeed. Here you go. All like I said, right. You'll find a ton of, a ton of ton of ton of guys in the Carolinas that run key down competitions. And this is basically taken from an old ham radio tradition where you have uh think of it as a vertical Yagi. It's a you'll phase. Have... It's a vertical phase array is what, what this is, yeah, right? There you yeah. Go. So you'll have one antenna that is only getting the power and then they're using the other, uh, the other beams to uh, push, the power and drive it in a vertical line towards the end. And this is what a typical key down vehicle will look like. Mm -hmm. uh, and that this guy, I know for sure is an AC guy. This guy has got a pretty good setup. <laughs> so, so mathematically vertical phase to the spacing between the elements is, is very important just like it is for a, a vertical, a horizontal Yagi. Right. So that's why right. they've got the, the, the aft section coming out the back and then that whole front end boom that's sticking out the front of the truck. Right. Cause they, they got to get Correct. the length to make it, to make it the right yes. size dimension. And if you look at the front on his front elements there, uh, they're held in with hose clamps. I, don't, I know this is not the greatest picture in the world, but, they're held in with, uh, with hose clamps. So when they go, when they get on location with these trucks, they've got to build this thing out and tune it in to get ready to compete. Oh, could really? Imagine, okay. Yeah. 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 You imagine drive. Well, I mean, no, you I couldn't drive with this, drive. right? <laughs> Callum would. I mean, you Have could. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could, but like, um, you're going to rip that whole thing apart if you're going, you know, too fast down the road. Yeah. And that'll probably, I mean, I don't think, I don't know what the uh, the build quality on PVC is, but no, 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 <laughs> that's like water drain pipe. Yeah, that's that's your basic. What probably schedule twenty? Uh huh. Yeah. 
So you'll get some uh, some other guys that'll go more uh, basic. And here's the one of the only examples of a van that I can find. Uh, just two antennas to to do the same kind of uh, a smaller version of what we just previously seen. Uh, that will I, be I, of middling effect. Are those actually phased, or they're both fed? Because sometimes CBers they're, they're, run them both fed, right? Sometimes, uh, most of the time, you'll see those on like trucks, right? Like uh, semis, co- uh, like, yeah, like co-phase style stuff. But right. uh, a lot of these, it'll be just one will be a real. Uh, what's your coaxis hooked to, and the other one's just a, a, a reflecting element. Interesting. Oh, is that how they run them? They run them reflectors. Yeah, make, it would make sense. Yeah. So. Uh, here we go. Here's here's another crazy rig that I found. What even is that? What looks like a a, a moonshine chiller co- hose on the top? What is that? That coil? I try to get information from this guy for about a year, and he won't respond to my PMs. Uh, what DMs on is Facebook. that, man? That's it's it's probably more that that secret sauce they've been toying with, man. <laughs> he's running the shine in that. That's what he's running. <laughs> I love it. You got that old drip gas. Yeah, so that's, you know, just so everybody has, this is a really good shot for this. You see how far out the front that's got to go so that they can they can line up those elements at the appropriate distance. That's impressive. And that's all fine-tuned. Like, they oh, probably ha- well, yeah, it has to days. be. The distances are perfect. They, they've got to be, because again, the, the, they'll, you, this is something they've, they've actually, I bet they've got to go do like a, a a field measurement on this. Right, They've they'll, they'll have like a, a a f- signal field measuring device that they'll run out to some location and they could probably see variances in the power and they're they're using they're they're literally adjusting it i'm assuming to do it field strength meters what i'm thinking have you ever seen anybody do that not personally but then again what you don't see behind closed doors don't mean something don't happen right they, like i said they've all got their secret sauce and i could probably call a couple of contacts i know that build and one of them runs uh, a competition rig, and I could probably get some answers, but uh, I just kind of let it be because of this. You know, it's it's their sauce, man. Like, oh yeah, that it their own little tweaks here and there uh, are what they don't want to let out. Mike but, Mike's in here doing the fact checking for us. He says that the ARRL RF exposure calculator says minimum save distance is twenty four feet when transmitting at twenty kilowatt. <laughs> Mike, what is it? What should it be inside the vehicle? Yeah, well, the, you'll you'll get a little bit of help there, but all the all the people that are watching this contest are all getting blasted. Oh. <laughs> Well, I mean, they are. I mean, you're not standing right up next to it when they do the key down. That's why they have large fields. Right, right, right. I mean, they do have some brains when it comes to it. I guess they're not all just. Oh, of course, dumb. yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, and again, I wanna, I wanna make sure we're not throwing any shade at the, what the people are doing here. They're not dumb to be able to achieve this. You can't be right. And and having these kind of setups again, where you you can't just grab an ARRL manual and be like, okay, I'm gonna build this thing. Like this is all a lot of trial and error, a lot of just long time working on stuff wisdom that they got going on so they're there's this is not dumb people to make this work and to be competitive and win right you, you're not just oh, yeah. throwing some <clears throat> wires on you know throwing some verticals on the roof and and going down i'm just gonna go buy down. a suburban and build a dipole on it and call it a key down rig yeah <laughs> there you go so uh here's a a, a atypical oh, uh pre-staging so they line them up they get them side by side they line up the uh, boom end. Is that kind of what they do? Like, so the tip uh, of the basically, boom? Basically, so you see the cone, how the cones are set up? So you'll, yeah. you'll basically have a place where they want you to put your tire. Oh, okay. And you got to be right there. And it doesn't matter. I mean, if one guy's running a Tahoe and the other one's got a Suburban, it doesn't matter, like, the physical length of the vehicle. Like, it's just your front's got to be right here. And, I mean, if <clears throat> if you're sticking out 10 foot farther than the next guy, that's just your setup, you know? Right, right. Well, that may actually be why it's so far shooting to the front because they want to get the elements a little bit further ahead of the competitor potentially. And hey, thanks, James uh, Half Horse. There, James had a lot of good comments. He's obviously an enthusiast as well. So he's saying, actually, <laughs> wait, good, good ham term. You're you're right in there, bud. Uh, a lot of CBers or a lot of builders get their info from the AWR handbook, and that is where the basic amp design comes from. Makes sense to me. We're all RF brothers at the end of the day. That's right. Yeah. 
Let's see, I don't know how many more I got left. There's another one. We can go a little bit uh, long. It's okay. Take take your time. Yeah. This is I think this is a lot of fun. So here's another one. If you look at the way that their um, their back elements are made compared to the the, the fronts. Yeah, so that's these interesting. These guys <clears throat> did the curly cues at the top or the uh, the twisted section. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, and then some guys, I mean, it's it's all built down to what they're toying with in their garage and finding or experimenting with. And if that gets them a half more DB a gain, that would right. be the edge. Um, I, I wouldn't this... expect to see that configuration, though. I would expect the antennas in the back to be reflectors and to be longer. And I am i don't know that those coils are, are doing that lengthening. So I'm, I'm curious about this one. This is a little bit of magic going on there from my point of view. Yeah, I might have to, to to talk to my my contact and see what his uh what he has to say about that because like I said, I mean, I never really dove too deep into the meat and potatoes because when I was around all this, I was in uh, a truck very similar to the one in my background. Like I I couldn't turn it into a comp rig. Yeah, and I mean, the reminder for everybody, this is kind of like just an introduction to this. This is all new to me. I've seen some of these rigs before, but I don't really understand the background, certainly not the power they're putting out on this. But uh, we're not necessarily doing a deep dive on antennas, and we certainly don't know uh, what any of these are cut or tuned for. We assume they're all cut for CB and tuned for CB, but, you know, what they're doing with those back elements, that's that's all. I have no idea. Yeah, I wish I had answer those questions i kind of want to know myself so oh yeah for sure i have to ha i have to do a part two to this <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah right so and excuse that's... me for the coughing i'm uh no, you're... i've been sick uh all, all all week basically that that was the the end of right on LP man shares dude that was it's so like you, it's like you 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 knew exactly how long it would take to get through there that's perfect nicely done Wow, that was uh, that was enlightening. Seriously, I that that was super super cool. And so, uh, you, you said you've been to a couple of these key downs. Yeah, um, when I was still working in the oil field, I I had the perfect timing lit up where I was within a couple hour drives of them, and I would go and you know check out. And they they usually are set up kind of like a, a mini ham fest, so there'll be a lot of guys there sure. selling their personal stuff or you know radios or uh, there's some antenna guys that that try to go and show up and support their you know home built products and whatnots and uh it's a kind of a cool kickback uh relaxed atmosphere uh from what i've always gained from them and like i said i plan on going to one in new orleans uh okay. the beginning of next year and i'm gonna try to do some uh some video down there so maybe we cool. can enlighten a little bit more and yeah. uh Put that on Just, your channel, and then we'll uh, we'll have you back, and we can talk about it. That'd be super cool. I told you, I'm I'm gonna try to find one in your area. It's something yeah. that you got experience at least once. I've, yeah, <laughs> it sounds really cool. So, no, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I cut you off. Uh, it's it's a whole other realm for what we normally play with. Oh yeah, for sure. So then, obviously, we should probably hit on the point of legality. You mentioned the disclaimer in front. You know, this stuff is yeah. is heavy, heavy power. You got to be careful with all this stuff. But yes, now it's let's... all fifteen watts. 21 that's watts right. on side band. Okay. That's right. Uh, <laughs> what what about the legality and all this? So this probably is a discussion it's... point. What are people What are people saying on this kind of stuff? To tell you the truth, they're so far out of the realm of ham radio. A lot of people just complain about them about you know oh it's CB language or these guys run stupid power. But in all in all, you never hear them bleed over on. 10 meters so they're kind of not a tyrant to the amateur radio operator oh no only yeah a tyrant to themselves so it's basically a lot of people just turn a blind eye to them the fcc s seems to have uh but then again they're in their own world like why would anybody want to go bother them if they're no longer in the days of uh because i remember when i had my first uh eight pill uh in my vehicle i could talk over televisions when everything was still analog right yeah, and, that time's pretty much gone now. We don't have that as and anymore. And with everything on digital now, I don't get to have the fun anymore. Uh, there's actually a couple of guys out there, uh, videos on YouTube, though, where you can see that they would talk over the PA system or the music system of a restaurant or a big box store, big box store name here, uh, having fun. And I think even those days are gone because 
the radio and the the amplifier technology has changed so much that i mean not saying that you couldn't but you know it just doesn't affect stuff like it used to yeah i i guess and you know it's that's kind of a good point is that it's you know it's it's just in their own frequency space they're not really messing with anybody um and it's it's part of their culture really their their radio culture and what benefit does the fcc have going after these people like there's really not any like what are they going to do right like you're going to spend a bunch this. of government money to chase people around that that have a that are just like super super hobbyists of, of cb it's kind of like what's the what's the point what are we getting out if, of this if it ever comes down to it and this is just my personal opinion on this it would just be a cash grab i mean because sure they're not doing anything it's not like they're they're not messing with emergency services they're not right you know they're not messing with television or AM FM broadcasts anymore that there's nothing that they mess with. So what, what else would there be to, for the FCC to go after these guys? There's, there's no reason really. Yeah. So that's, that's why it's, uh, it was, it was cool. The the time frame that I was in there, but uh, thanks to you and the other uh, many YouTubers that do amateur radio videos, I was able to come on to this side and I've had more fun here Oh. Mainly because I got sick of Chase and Skip. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, who and it's to rare. Listen to, <laughs> versus to listen to months of static. Right. 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 Versus, you know, we do that for for fun as a break of something that's more consistent, usually. Right. There's a question in the chat. Well, what does eight pill stand for? I know you mentioned it again, but it's probably so, worth mentioning a, a second time. In this in the CB realm, a transistor is considered a pill because the 2879 transistor and other variants of it look like a big aspirin, just a white aspirin. A, yep. So they call them pills. Mm -hmm. And, and they, we saw and with those it, amps, they had the, the bigger ones. Yeah. And and a lot of this comes via, it's all slang. Mm -hmm. Just like getting down was, you know, hey, I'm, I'm here and I'm gone, you know? And uh, like I use the, the reference drop in the mall and that's, comes from you know the this the channel six guys you that's know, the motor mouth the, mall thing right yeah motor mouth mall also uh most of the time when prime minister keys up his uh his sdr it's got the gavel drop in three times before you hear him talk so and that's and that's the voice toys you you said right those no, are that he's actually running a very nice sdr oh um, okay he he runs a Oh, it's not the flex. Again, we're What's talking about Sir Mix a lot. Yes. Uh oh, Don has one of these radios. Uh is is it the Sun SDR? The Sun SDR? I think it's a Sun SDR. It's a variant of the the high dollar SDR uh radio the that you don't. Is it the Anon or is it the uh the Herm the Hermes? No, it's a uh, it's the high dollar. It's it's in the same class Sun. as a um uh, as a as a flex. Okay. So well, that could be the honor that you don't, yeah, the Sun SDR. So you don't actually have to unlock, you know, and get a board and do all this with, yeah, um, as you would with a flex. So a lot of those guys are switching to those, but then again, you got to think about his background as an audio technician. He just pipes in whatever audio he wants into his, uh, into his radio there, and then he can transmit that out every time he keys up. Nice. So Mike is uh, dropping the the link to the YouTube video. Uh, for the key down, and, and we might as well just pull that up. Let me, let me, let me. So the, this is the one with the sparks. Uh, let's. <laughs> the good one. That didn't. That did not work. There we go. Hold on one second. I'll open it on the web here. We'll wrap up with this so you guys get an idea. Uh, yep, this is the one. So you can see the the sparks there. Look at that. I think there's audio for this. I think we might be muted. Hold on. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, we got a kid in the in the What would it be? Damn without, electric uh, show. Uh, yeah. from, uh, yeah. So you can see this. So that was eight years ago. This was posted eight years ago. So there's an older one too. There's one that was shot on VHS that's uh, at night 
And mm-hmm. when the guy keys up, you can just watch the static. And, and it's not that there's anything wrong. It's just he's creating so much. The 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 outdoor conditions were right with the moisture sitting sure. heavy in the air that you could watch it the just run up the beam. That's impressive. All right, you got the little one there. Thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks for thanks for being on the live stream while uh, while having somebody probably watch the kids there. We appreciate it. Uh, Mego. Megoptera1 says, Josh just passed the general exam last night. Congratulations. One month after technician. Congratulations. Chasing extra. Wouldn't have done it without you and your associates' enthusiasm and instruction. Thanks. Well, congrats to you, man. Thanks for getting out there, uh, getting on the air. Get on the air because that's, you know, that's what we want you to do. We want to make contacts with you. Sideboom, you're the man. This was, this was super informative. This is super, super cool. And you did a great job of kind of like distilling the information and, and giving it to people here. So I hope everybody had a, a fantastic time. I, I pinned. Well, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. No. I pinned Sideboom's YouTube channel. Um, you said you're going to be doing some stuff with that in the future. So absolutely go check him out there. I appreciate it. Uh, anything you want to mention before we head out? We're going to go to the after chat here in a minute. Anything you want to mention? <laughs> oh, no, sorry. I just spaced out. No, no problem. Uh, other than man, thanks for, for doing what you do for the community. Oh, and... oh, um, if somebody wanted to join like a Facebook group on this kind of stuff, what would they search for? Uh, there are key down and break uh, groups on Facebook. Okay. There, um, uh, there's a couple of groups for, you know, panel vans, AC, uh, key down. I mean, so if you go and find some of the larger, uh, I'll tell you the key, cause I can't remember all the, the names of the groups off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you were to go on some of these CB groups, look for the largest three, uh, in existence as far as, uh, Facebook stats wise, um, there's guys that post to all these different groups um, all the time. So like they're always trying to promote their own, you know, key down specific or uh, their extensions. Uh, when somebody asks a specific, and I see a lot of guys are saying bring BBI. up BBI. Yeah. BBI does his own break uh, once a year. Uh, he's got a group of really good guys uh, that run out there. Uh, so, uh, he doesn't really post as far as like, if you're looking for specific ones in your area uh, and I see someone asking about discord, uh, I don't know of any specifically uh, they run a lot on pal talk. Yeah. That thing's still around. Pal so talk. yes. Wow. That's, okay. that's where you'll find uh, there's a couple of guys uh, like, I think one of them, I think it's the super bowl, super bowl transit authority is the group on there that a lot of the guys will hang out in and, uh talk yeah talk back and forth uh, that's awesome. um and, and what's funny is out of all the methods uh that's where i've talked to prime minister himself the most is on oh, pal cool. talk i'm, I'm trying that's to crazy. get a, an, an interview crazy. with him i want to interview so him cool. about this whole realm he's been in since you know back in the 80s yeah that would be great oh man that's super cool all right well uh we're gonna head over to the after chat so if you guys are interested in asking uh Sideboom here with some more questions. And then feel free to join us. The link is in the description. And uh, I'm going to wrap up the show. So thanks, uh, Sideboom, for being on. All right? Hey, th- thanks for having me. But, I mean, I can't get out of here without saying Sideboom just got down. <laughs> he did. <laughs> thanks, buddy. <laughs> hey, thanks. All right. And thank you watching, everybody, with the likes and all of the super chats. That's super awesome. And all these fine fellows here that help to support the channel really appreciate you. I got a little bit of extra support here. I guess you could call it a bit of a hair of the dog after the nine-hour live stream that went on uh, on Mike Kate MRD's channel. I wasn't in for all of it, but um, who, buddy? So this is a, a rhyme. Where is it? Come on. There you go. In uh, Winter India Pale Ale. This is from Hammock Ham Radio. Thanks for that. And he sent another one, which I will enjoy on the after chat. Let's see. It is. This is the Homestead Beer Tanner Bomb. Christmas ale. So I'm looking forward to this one, getting that holiday spirit. And a reminder for Christmas time, Christmas Eve, I'm going live, and we're going to be burning up some uh, some Christmas lights, and I'm going to be running them as a ham radio antenna. I think this is my fourth or fifth year of doing this. So, man, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, so, again, thank you, everybody. Really do appreciate it. Lots of questions. Um, make sure you guys join us over on the after chat, and we'll make sure we – 
we let the questions go to side boom right in the beginning if you've got CB related questions or anything like that. And as always, you know, disclaimer on all of this. Obviously, we're treading into an area where, you know, the legal lines are are blurred a bit. We're not advocating for any of this. We just find it fun and interesting. Excuse me. And uh, I think side boom did a good job on the disclaimer. So there you go. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks to the Brew Crew. And I will play you out with some memes. 73. All right, everybody, we'll catch you later.